Today we'll be discussing an exciting new feature that will help you to do ministry work more efficiently. Inside Technical Sales Representative Steele Billings joins us to talk about ministry workflows. Steele Billings is with us today. Steele, since this is your first time on the podcast, why don't you start off by telling us a little bit about yourself before we start talking about the new ministry workflows feature. Yeah, Don, thanks for having me. Uh, well, I've been with Shelby for about three and a half years. I've uh, worked with a lot of churches, uh, doing a little bit of everything here. I've worked in version 5 support, arena support, was an account manager for a while, and uh, now I'm on the technical sales team. Uh, I am married, and my wife and I are expecting a child any day now, so if I run out of here, you know it's baby time. So what exactly does the Ministry Workflows tool do, and what areas of the program are affected? Well, Ministry Workflows is a way for you to put the system to work for you. Uh, with a combination of triggers and actions, the church can use things like contributions, attendance, and groups to constantly track the progress of a member. So can you explain the difference between triggers and actions and how those are used to automate repeating processes? Triggers are a way for the system to know when to do something and an action is the way that the system knows what to do. At this point, Stu, I was hoping you could go to the PC and show us how to set up a ministry workflow. If you could maybe set up one from attendance, giving, and membership, that would be great for our viewers. Yeah, absolutely. I'd be happy to. Give me a second and I'll head over to the PC. First, we want to add a workflow. We'll give our workflow a title. And then we need to add a trigger. So our triggers can be attendance-based, giving-based, and group-based. For this example, let's look at attendance. Here we want to start a workflow for anybody who has been absent at least four times in the last four weeks to a particular group. Then we need to create an action. Actions can be emails, they can be text messages, interactions, or tasks. And for this example, we're going to choose email. We want to email the person that has been absent we can add additional people, so maybe a particular pastor, and we can even blind copy people. Next, we want to give our email a subject, and then just create a body. When you're ready with your email, just hit done, and that saves that workflow. The next trigger we're going to look at is a giving trigger. So here we can track our contributors giving trends. We can look at people in specific groups or just people who give greater than or less than a certain amount. So if somebody has given greater than $500 to any of our categories or purposes in either a single gift or over the last certain amount of weeks, that could identify certain trends for us. And then again, once we have our trigger, we can create certain interactions, emails, text messages, or we can add them to groups, update their progress, or create an administrative message. Next, let's take a look at group-based triggers. Group-based triggers can be when somebody is added or removed from a group, or when somebody has been in a group for a certain amount of time. So your workflow could be very different if somebody is added to your new members group versus when somebody is added to your first time visitors group. If somebody is added to your new members group, you may want to send an email to that person and also the group leader, just joining them as a new member of your church and maybe inviting them to an upcoming breakfast that you may have or some kind of event for new members. Now, we can have multiple actions as well. So if I also want to assign an interaction, maybe to a pastor, to call that new member, then we can do that. We can add any amount of actions as we want to one particular trigger. Now finally, let's look at how you could use workflows to track your members' growth. So here we have an example set up, and we have a four-step process of membership. So we have a Grow 101, Grow 201, Grow 301, and Grow 401. What this workflow is doing is it has a trigger that says when somebody has been present one time in the last one week to Grow 101, then add them to Grow 201. After that takes place, the next week if they come back to Grow 201, it then adds them to Grow 301. Once they reach Grow 401 and they have been present in all four classes, then it adds them to our new members and it sends them an email. 
Now, one last thing that we want to do is we want to add an action to update the progress. Now, the progress is going to be in a future release, but it's not the last piece of updating a member's progress. There are more things coming, like a progress bar to track maybe how healthy they are in the church, how active they are in the church. And this is going to be a great way for you to automatically do that. And that's how you set up ministry workflows in Shelby Next. In conclusion, Stu, I was hoping you could tell us the major advantages of using this new ministry workflows tool over doing the process manually. Ministry workflows are really a piece of game-changing technology. This idea of putting the system to work for you will not only save you countless hours of, of labor and manual process, but it will allow you to take those same people that would normally be doing that and put them back into where their calling is in the ministry. The new Ministry Workflows feature is available now for Shelby Next customers. And keep in mind that Ministry Workflows classes will be available at ISC 2016 this summer in Orlando, Florida. For more information, just visit the website that you see there on the screen and click the Breakouts tab at the top of the page. Start automating your workflows and processes now with Shelby Next Ministry Workflows.